Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. We are here with a launch to Mars. We are going to send some hydrogen with our duo launcher, still using two Orion carrier planes as our first stage. And we will just expedite this. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. So yeah, it's just a tank of hydrogen to supplement uh, what we have already sent with our St. Louis spaceship and hopefully we won't need it and then we'll just have a tank of fuel available around Mars it's going it has a nuclear engine on it just the same NASA NTP architecture kind of engine and that will be used to capture uh, Mars obviously we're not going to aero break a hydrogen tank because they are sort of bulky so using a nuclear engine was best even though the nuclear engine uh, low thrust as it is is still uh, more than three tons. It's a it's a 100 kilonewton engine that is 3.3 tons. So it's not great. And one thing we want to know is whether there's going to be substantial boil off here. Uh, we have some boil off right now, but that is probably on the core. So here we are again using just the carrier planes as our first stage, uh, sort of skirting the rules by using two of them. After this, we will launch a Xenon tank, which is a little bit more complicated because I wanted to use one of the Xenon tanks that I had already made, but we can't really launch it fully fueled. Xenon is fairly dense, so we're going to launch it partly fueled. It has the benefit of having nuclear reactors with it, uh, which could provide other possible things. But um, yeah, and I've put ion engines as well as a supplementary uh, hypergolic engine on that. So basically we're just launching fuel over and then we will follow the missions out and do the mid-course adjustments and see if they can properly capture around Mars. Okay, core ignition. And shutdown of the boosters and separation. I did put the jet engines this time and they should have the reserve fuel necessary to do their thing. Uh, the fairings are really large, which means that we would like to get rid of them, but I don't know if it's safe to get rid of them. Let's find out. Uh, we are at low thrust right now, so separate. Uh, separate. Ooh, you can see why, right? Oh, huge. Alright, but they are off. And so, yeah, we've just got one of these and tank for NASA NTP. Uh, they're larger than the tanks on the St. Louis because those are, we're limited by the size that we could launch on a single Orion carrier plane. So this is a little bit wider. We have some heat penetration but in milliwatts right now, but it's going up. So we have to watch out for that. We do have radiators available. Well, the core is going to be left on a suborbital trajectory and I'm not going to worry about the rigmarole of setting up the return of the little bottom bit, that the engine return bit. We'll just let it be suborbital, and we will assume NASA will have figured out where it was going to end up. It has its parachutes and everything. Well, I really wish I hadn't uh, started turning immediately. As far as Delta V is concerned, well, this is just a fuel tank with an engine attached, so... It has enough delta V, the question is how much of the hydrogen will it actually deliver? Okay, that's orbit 275 by 152. We have 3,928 left to transfer. And, but transfer is complicated. Let's see. Already got a fleet, a flotilla of things heading out there. But you can never have enough, really. This does not have to arrive very quickly. It does look like the next opportunity after this one will be a breeze compared to what we're spending here. Okay, uh, we probably will have to tweak it a bit, but I'm liking this sort of thing where we're sort of going past Mars and encountering it way late after more than a year. But we're doing the maneuver here instead of the actual ascending or descending node because this is higher up. So it's more of a mid-course adjustment and not a plane change. And we're not correcting the entire inclination, just making sure that the ascending node happens to be 
at that spot when we arrive at Mars. So sort of off plane. And let's see if we can tweak it a little bit and see how much it'll take to capture. The hope is that if we get there slowly, that we will take less to capture, but it's really hard to figure out what's going to be going on here. It's too coarse. Okay, capture. It seems like a bear capture will take about 886, so that's fine by me. We don't need that right now. That's wishful thinking at the moment. But yes, we have a plot for Mars. It's within our budget, and let's get to it. Okay, we are beginning to turn to the node. We are looking at a 16 minute burn time with this stage last. And again, it is uh, uh, SE 2040V engine, basically a large RL10. Uh, if you like, uh, we could have replaced it with maybe three or four RL10s and it'd be the same deal. Sounds familiar, right? Oh yes, and of course we are going to be pointing severely radial for the start of this burn, which isn't ideal. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to deviate from the node after all with our periapsis going down now. We are gonna just point prograde. Oh, we've lost signal. I was not expecting that. Oh, now we have signal. Okay. Well, we're not going to see an encounter with Mars because we have to do a mid-course adjustment in order to make that happen, so I'm just going to see when the apoapses line up and have the same number. Otherwise, of course, we've sort of deviated from the maneuver and it's been a long maneuver, so we're probably not quite right otherwise. And, of course, with all the deviation, we have used more fuel than we ought to have. Okay, separation, and getting all this stuff ready. And ignition of the nuclear engine. Uh, it's not showing me the number very well. I think we were close enough. Okay, we are fine as far as the mid-course adjustments in half a year to get there in a little over a year. I'll add that to our list. But we do still have some boil off. Whoops. Um, 0 0.0041 kilograms per hour, but that heat penetration has been going up. Well, we'll see what happens, but... I mean, when you think about that much per hour, it shouldn't be a whole lot. We're talking about in 100 days we lose a kilogram kind of thing. But, if that heat penetration keeps going up, that's no good. If it sneaks up on us, I have no way to counteract that. But anyway, it is on its way. Nearly 48 tons over to Mars, and next up we'll launch some extra xenon gas. Alright, next day, and here we are for the xenon tank launch. And this time we don't have to worry about boil off, but it's only a half full xenon gas tank. So that's a little bit sad, but... Well, we will make do, because this was convenient because it has the nuclear reactors and we don't have to worry about power like that. So, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. Okay, should be past max Q. Alright, core ignition. Duo engine cutout, and separation. Well, it worked last time. Fairings. Fairings. All right. So yeah, it's just this tank that we had on the back end of of the St. Louis. And we just dumped the hydrogen since we don't have any use for it. And half the xenon gas. We didn't need the MLI layers, so we don't have any of that. And we do have the same two ion engine units. And then also a SE-1003A, uh, which is a MH Mon 3 burning engine. We have about 900 meters per second of fuel for it. That would be enough to potentially capture our Mars. 
or do some other maneuvers around Mars to rendezvous. Oh, we didn't go to a 75 degree angle initially. Aha, uh -huh. that's a problem. We were supposed to do that with the Orion carrier planes, now we are doing it here with this instead. Okay, this stage will remain suborbital again, but close enough to orbit that it would be a fairly normal situation for the engine cluster. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, that'll give us some buffer on the periapsis this time. Okay, shut down. Uh, 262 by 211, and we will plot for Mars again. Okay, we have our plot. It's similar, but not the same as the last one. The mid-course adjustment is costing a little bit more. All right, as the sun sets behind us, ignition. Okay, hopefully this stage has enough. We ended up with more than more delta V than last time once we got to orbit, so I think we'll just about eke it out. Okay, that looks good enough to me. Well, let's see. Need to fine tune that. Okay, well this node is in 116 days, which it's possible that if I delete it more it costs less. The last one did. But we'll take it for now. We are in daylight. I am going to separate. It's nice and gentle. RCS enabled. Alright, so it's on its way. It's got nuclear reactors we don't have to worry about. Power. Those nuclear reactors being necessary to run the ion engines. That uh, These are the nuclear reactors. There's four of them. Oh, but I don't have... I should have had radiators. <laughs> Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, these nuclear reactors are very uh, simply set up. They're not set up like with full complexity. So I don't think they generate the waste heat that they ought to. So we're cheating. Um, but I should have put radiators. That was not right. But anyway, this is how it is right now. I'll have to figure out how to change this module so that it does produce the waste heat and require the radiators. But for now, this is how it is. And we will add the alarm. And now let's follow everything in and make sure that we do all the mid-course adjustments. We've got a whole bunch, seven of them. Okay, first up we have this uh, Mars Supplies Relay Mission. Uh, it was the small supply tank that I launched with the single Orion carrier plane, figuring out that that really couldn't send too much, but uh, it would aero capture and then try to rendezvous. Not a whole lot of Delta V for that, but possibly enough. Okay, looking good. I was worried that we wouldn't be controlling in the right way, but we are. We'd probably want to come in on the opposite side, actually. I want everything in line with Phobos and Deimos, ideally. Okay, up. Okay. Oh, 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 no, kill rotation. That's fine. Stop, stop. Uh, let's see how much it would cost just to flip that onto the other side once we get there. I think it'd be cheaper right now, so let me just plot that. Okay, that is fine. We'll add the SOI change, and that will be arriving in 77 days. Okay, next up was the heavier supply mission launched by the Duo, and that is what we have here. But it's got a really long burn time. 25 minutes for the whole thing, but we're only using 9,002, uh, sorry, 927 of it. 9,000 would be quite a thing. But yeah, so that'll take 11 minutes, it looks like, if that is correct. Up, oh, up, I always pass the note a bit. Seems so dark around here. Okay, whoop, a little bit too far there. Oh, it's on the correct side. It's inclined a little bit badly, though. We have a periapsis now, but... Well, let me just plot a correction for the correction. Okay, okay, quickly doing this. 
Well, just it trying to point at the note is doing too much. Uh, all right, I'll take that. <laughs> it's too much. All right, we are going to add the SOI change. This is arriving much later than the previous one, which is fine. 269 days until this arrives. Should be much gentler. And so this is a go. Next up, the mini queue. Okay, here we are with the mini queue. It uh, seems to be under control as far as boil off is concerned. Um, it's a little bit complicated. The heat penetration's got three different numbers here, and I don't understand that one. But uh, we've got some watts, some milliwatts, some watts. I I don't like that much boil off, uh, at least on the 13 watt side. You'd think that we could come up with a refrigeration system to just cool that heat off. I mean, we've got these huge solar panels, but apparently not. But it's going down, the numbers are going down at least. So I think sometimes when we bounce back to it, it sort of spikes with the heat. Okay, we might as well start now. Ignition. Okay, we can maintain full thrust without maxing out the pitch, even though we've got this sort of weird orientation going here. The RCS thrusters are puffing a bit, though. Oh, it's getting a little bit wobbly. I'll throttle down. We probably have time. Okay, let's see what's actually happened here. Well, there's a minor inclination fix that I would like to do when we get in there, so I'll add that as our SOI change maneuver. Okay, that'll be fine. That'll be in 196 days. And we have, I'll just go with the SOI change here too. Okay, so that's going to take its time coming in. Uh, we are all good otherwise, I think. We'll see how it goes. I hope the boil off doesn't sneak up on us though. We have a little radiator there. <laughs> I don't know if it's uh, doing enough, but we have a radiator there. Okay, so next up, scanner relay. Okay, here we go for this one. Hopefully we will find some nice resources on Mars. Go. Okay, all right, all right, let's see what's going on. We want to get into that polar orbit. Well, we don't want to get too high. We'll have a maneuver once we get there to figure out exactly what inclination we've got, because uh, I can't use the moons as a reference necessarily. They're not necessarily at zero or at the equator. So we're probably going to need to do something like that initially and also bring our cells down a bit to make sure we're low enough. Alright, so something like that and I'll add that. I'll add the SOI change first. Okay, so we've got that and so scanner is on its way and finally, well not finally, uh, we've got the two that we launched in this episode but we are getting to the St. Louis and it's burn to make sure it hits Mars. There's an ion engine burn, so I'll hop to it early. Okay, we are going to try to do this just with the ion engines. They are active. We still have some hydrogen, but uh, maybe we should use the hydrogen because right now the heat penetration is at 2 kilowatts. And again, this is just a ridiculous spike. Uh, this tank only has 100 watts. Well, I could move the fuel, I guess. I don't know why this tank has such a high heat penetration and boil-off loss. Let's see what we have left with the hydrogen. Maybe it's best just to use it. We've only got 350 seconds. It's, it's probably all going to boil off somehow. I'm sure we had more than that before. Using just uh, ion engines to do the capture is going to be a pain, though. 
Okay, the hydrogen is done. And so now we're just on ions all the way. And we did this maneuver a little bit early. Hopefully it's not too far off though. Okay, well, that has us with a relative inclination of 0 0.01. And let's just get rid of that and let's see what's going on here. That's a little bit far out. We have no backward facing thrusters? How is that? There's got to be a lot of backward facing thrusters. Well, let me activate this RCS. Or I guess that doesn't work. Great. Apparently not. There's a lot of thrusters on here that do not seem to be functional. Well, we're going to have another node closer to adjust. Okay, we will take that for now. That is another node for this. Food, water, and oxygen look fine. It's all about delta V right now. Okay, we'll do this maneuver with the xenon stage. And then next time we'll have the first arrival. We'll, we'll do the arrivals next time, though we still have a couple of maneuvers to do. But let's get done with this other mid-course adjustment. Oh, we didn't have enough comms on this xenon stage. Uh, it's a little bit of an odd one out as far as that's concerned. We have relays that are close by though. It probably doesn't need too much extra. Like everything else is sort of an interconnected web of stuff going on. Uh, well, that one, well, that is a relay on its own anyway. Uh, so I'm... I'm gonna just go with Fiat. In other words, uh, I made the part, so I'm going to just increase its range. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I have adjusted the part. It's nefarious, but here we are. I've got a signal strength of 30% now through the relay, and we will just proceed with that. We'll see if I need to bump it up a little bit more. It wasn't too big a deal. And right now we're not relying on it being able to communicate directly back to Earth from Mars. We're just going through relays that are just around it as part of the flotilla. Well, it's, uh, I think we're going to do ion engine here, so let's just uh, go ahead and start. Plenty of Delta V here. RCS feel we need to watch out for a little bit, but... Uh, the burn time, I hope, is less. <laughs> Uh-oh. This is messed up. Uh, why would it be messed up? No... Radiators, maybe? I don't think we're gonna get this xenon gas over there safely. Well, certainly we're not gonna have the ability to burn for 33,000 years. Yeah, no chance of that. Okay, well, looks like we have other problems with this. I'm going to have to figure that out for the next episode. I don't know exactly why it's like this. Maybe it's the radiators. But I did have this sort of problem with this part before in the Solar System Tourism series. Not one of the videos I've posted yet, but um, I tried to use this in the Solar System Tourism live streams and it didn't work out quite right and I think I had the radiators on in that case so yeah this seems to work when we have it on the St. Louis but it doesn't seem to work quite right when we don't and that is a puzzle I'm gonna have to figure out uh, later I thought it was because they were two different installs and some mod was interfering with it but it looks like it's something special about the St. Louis makes it work out and right now it doesn't so I'll try and figure that out and we'll see in the next video if we can salvage this or whether this is just going to not work out and we'll just proceed with the rest. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.